In the dynamic landscape of Kenyan governance, the two-thirds general stands as a pivotal measure aimed at fostering inclusivity and representation. As we delve into this documentary, we explore the profound significance of the two-thirds gender role in shaping the leadership and governance space of the nation. From assessing the current trajectory of gender balance to uncovering the hurdles impeding its full realization, we embark on a journey through the perspectives of diverse voices. Join us as we unravel the complexities and seek solutions to ensure equitable opportunities for women in the leadership and governance sphere. Against the backdrop of Kenya's rich history, the struggle for gender equality and leadership has been a persistent narrative. Over the years, women have encountered formidable challenges, battling societal norms <laughs> and systemic barriers to secure their place in the political and governance arena as Wakili Beth Michuma tells us. For the longest time in the 20th century, all through the world, not only in Kenya, women have been agitating for their rights, for their rights to be heard, for their rights to be part of the political process and part of the decision-making and, you know, uh, nationhood of not only Kenya, but all the nations in the world. So uh, the journey of the two-thirds gender rule, you know, basically started in Kenya, where it's actually prominent, is when women went to Beijing. And they came back and they said, we require to be in parliament, we require to be in positions to be had, and we are going to work through that. So they walked through that journey until now it came to the making of the current constitution of Kenya 2010. And in the making of the current constitution of Kenya 2010, especially the women and men who are basically in the constitutional making process were very clear that it is time to entrench gender equality in our constitution. Professor Haman Manyora, a public and governance expert, and lecturer at the University of Nairobi also concurs that it has not been a walk in the park for women in leadership in Kenya. Okay. The challenges over the years have been stereotypes. Mm -hmm. That any woman who goes to parliament or for public space, public office, is a prostitute. She's a divorcee. Uh, she's a drunkard. Uh, she's loose. Uh, those are stereotypes. Mm -hmm. There have been also cultural impediments some cultures would find it like, extremely difficult to believe that uh, a woman can be a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been challenges of violence. This one especially has been bad for women. Mm -hmm. Because for many years our politics have been, you know, really less with a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. And when there is violence, women will be very poor competitors. Okay. Another obstacle has been that our, our politics is money driven. The 2010 constitution had in it the inclusion of article 27 which provides that the state shall take steps to ensure that not more than two-thirds of members of elective and appointive positions are of the same gender. This was seen as a deliberate step to cure the gender gap in a male-dominated leadership space. However, questions abound on the importance of the two-thirds gender rule. According to leadership experts whom we talk to and constitutional lawyers, the rule is definitely important due to various reasons. To the extent that the Kenyan people, uh -huh. when they adopted and gave unto themselves the 2010 constitution, found it necessary to include the two-thirds gender principle in the constitution, mm -hmm. it means that the people of Kenya consider it to be an important issue. And why it is important is because you cannot have a country that is being run by only one set of players. Mm -hmm. Because a country has two set of players, you must allow opportunity to everybody. And also you take into cognizance some of the challenges that one gender has faced that has held them back from fully engaging or participating in our governance. And that includes from elective politics all the way to even appointed positions. So the country will not get the benefit of all its population if one set of that population, in this particular instance, largely women, are left out in governance. 
it is very significant i think if you trace let us just take parliament for an instance if you trace the numbers of women in parliament and i keep on saying women because largely as kenya we have the men in the public space if we trace the numbers from perhaps one woman in parliament to two to seven to ten unless it is codified in law this is largely to be ignored we must remember that as a nation that we are still quite patriarchal that not everybody accepts that a woman can have it all so to speak you know both at home and in the workplace we thought that with the new constitution and with the fact that we are now giving women a political voice mm -hmm. and uh, giving the president authority to be able to do that mm -hmm. you'll be able to correct some of these very cultural bad cultural uh, manners however Professor Haman Manyura disagrees and insists that it doesn't matter which gender occupies what position as long as they can deliver on their mandate. I think it is misguided. <laughs> it does, I don't find the need for it myself. Okay, why? Uh, look here. That's not to say we don't appreciate women. Mm -hmm. Because women are about 50% of the population. If you think as a country you can move forward, leaving behind such a big constituents you must be deluding yourself mm -hmm. but i think women can on their own mm -hmm. make it to elective posts without this affirmative action there are better things to do and i, I, I believe this kenya is like a plane we want to fly across the atlantic mm -hmm. we want to land this plane in america across the atlantic mm -hmm. thousands of kilometers mm -hmm. we are not going to look at the color of the pilot or the sex of the pilot. Mm -hmm. No. We just want the best pilot who can deliver this plane from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport to JF Kennedy Airport in America. Mm -hmm. That's the pilot we are looking for. Kenya is like a patient we are wheeling into a theater. We don't look for, at the color or tribe of the surgeon. Luo, Kiku, you know. Indian, no. We don't look below the navel to see whether they are male or female. We just want the best surgeon to operate on this patient. Even as we reflect on Kenya's journey towards gender balance in governance, the question looms large. Are we on the right track? In this segment, we navigate the currents of progress and challenges, examining the strides made and the road ahead. From legislative initiatives to societal shifts, we scrutinize the landscape to discern if the nation is steering towards a future where women's voices resonate equally in the corridors of power. Different experts believe that we are not actually in the right track yet. So we have two arms of government that necessarily do not take cognizance of the two-thirds gender rule, both in elective that is parliament and appointive positions that is the executive so no we are not on a good trajectory uruto has to now appoint two women as advisors mm -hmm. and try to include them in cabinet to meet the two-thirds gender principle so his composition of the cabinet mm -hmm. as well does not meet mm -hmm. the two-thirds gender principle uh, his cabinet i think is around only 23 percent women as opposed to 30 percent 33 percent should be women mm -hmm. so then indeed came up with these advisory positions for monica juma and Harriet chigai mm -hmm. and try to force them to be members of the cabinet but of course they're not members of the cabinet mm -hmm. however professor haman manyura believes that the situation is not as bad as it were several years back this country has produced enough women mm -hmm. when kcp results is being produced a place like Figa, there are more women than men, more girls than boys. Mm -hmm. When S are there, there are boys there, there are girls there. Mm -hmm. When universities are graduating, first class, second class, all these things, PhDs, what have you, mm -hmm. they are women. Mm -hmm. How come we are behaving as if the women are not there? Mm -hmm. You know, there are situations sometimes when the obstacles and the historical uh, Phil has been so unfair to us, mm -hmm. to a group like the blacks in America or mm -hmm. women and so on. They have been so disadvantaged over history. You need an aff affirmative action. Mm -hmm. We are not there. We have broken the barriers for women. Okay. Of their own volition today, families educate children. That was not so during my time. Mm -hmm. A child will get, during our time, CPU was 36 points maximum. Mm -hmm. A girl will get 
30 points out of 36. A boy in the same family will get 18. The boy of 18 will be taken to school. Mm -hmm. The girl of 27 will be left, 30 will be left. Mm -hmm. That's no longer the case. As we unravel the complexities surrounding gender representation in Kenya, a pressing question emerges. Why has the government been unable to fully implement the two-thirds gender rule close to 14 years since the promulgation of the new constitution? According to the experts whom we engage, it emerges that lack of political goodwill has been the biggest hurdle in the quest to realize the full implementation of this particular role. There is lack of quorum almost all the time a bill is uh, uh, tabled in parliament. It's as if the legislature itself does not want to see this uh, two-thirds gender rule into fruition. How many lines has President William Ruto told since 2013? Mm -hmm. It's just a lack of goodwill basically from the appointing authority. I think something that uh, our members of parliament need to realize is that they go there on behalf of the people. The people are the ones who voted for this constitution and they voted for this constitution knowing that article 81b is there. As we journey through the heart of Kenya's pursuit for gender equality, our focus now shifts to the critical implementation phase of the two-thirds gender rule. We uncover practical measures and strategies that can shape the path toward achieving balanced representation. Okay, so what the multisexual working group is coming up is a, pro is a proposed framework to implement uh, the not more than two-thirds gender rule. Uh, the group has basically, or rather the task force has gone around the country. It has collected views from the people on how to implement. And largely what we've gotten across the board is this is a constitutional provision. It is a human right. It's a matter of rule of law. It's no longer an if or it's no longer actually an if, it's a when. We need to implement it right now. I might not necessarily speak about the proposals because this is a report which is going to come actually in the month of February or March, where we are going to tender our findings to the uh, Cabinet Secretary for Gender, Honorable Aisha Juma. But once we do that, and once you know we come up with a proposal and take it to Parliament, it's up to them to pass it. Political will is very important, mm -hmm. even in the African American civil rights movement, for them to make significant strides, it had to take uh, political will from the top. You can achieve that at the executive level, mm -hmm. very easily at the executive level. I think at the judiciary now, I think that has been achieved, mm -hmm. probably almost a kill 50-50 again. Mm -hmm. So it's only in the parliament that this hasn't happened because of the elections, mm -hmm. the, the choices that Kenyans make. Mm -hmm. But if you recall when we proposed the Punguza Mizigo Constitutional Amendment Bill of 2019, mm -hmm. our party wanted to achieve that actually at 50-50. Mm -hmm. We had proposed that uh, we elect two members of parliament from every county, one man, one woman, mm -hmm. and that would have given us 50% outrightly. We need a bit of mentorship for women who you know who want to run for politics or even who want to be at the top of boards. And I think to just tell women dare, dare to step out. Eh? The worst thing that will happen is you fail the first time. The second time you might just make it. As we draw our curtains on our exploration of gender representation in Kenya, the journey towards the two-thirds gender rule leaves us with a tapestry of challenges, progress and hope. While the path to full implementation may be intricate, the commitment to a more inclusive future is evident. Our journey has uncovered the complexities, the successes, and the ongoing efforts to bridge the gender gap in public governance in Kenya. As Kenya stands at the crossroads of change, the torch of progress is carried forward by the collective resolve to ensure that every voice, regardless of gender, resonates in the corridors of power.